Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is an amateur bout scheduled for four two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. This bout is not sanctioned by the Florida State Boxing Commission. Your referee is Jason Clark. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with the white stripe. He is 5 feet 11, 178 pounds, undefeated in his amateur career, three wins, no losses, two knockouts. His style is mixed martial arts. He comes from Sarasota, Florida. Let's welcome Troy, the artist couture. His opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks. Six feet tall, 190 pounds, also undefeated, one win, no loss. His fighting style is Muay Thai from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Here is James Mason. Back at Shindo Kumite 4, Troy Couture from Sarasota, Florida, taking on James Mason from Philadelphia. Both of them amateurs, but both of them undefeated. Troy at 3-0, James at 1-0, and James Mason, Bill, is 40 years old. James Mason is a terrific fighter. He's a veteran, a Shindo Kumite 3, and as you can see, he's given his all. Both of these fighters, again, coming out very strong in the first round. Both fighters trying to establish themselves early. Couture going to the kicks, the spinning back kick. None of them landing very well. Both throwing punches early, and Mason now dominating the neck wrestling, but Couture busy on the inside. You see Couture's taking advantage of Mason's holding him. He's getting a lot of knees into Mason's chest. Nice right hand by Mason, and Couture briefly went down. Almost went down. They'll call it a slip, but there were definitely some punches landed there. As another big straight left hand lands, and that's a lead jab. And it seems to be damaging to Couture. Couture maybe not expecting the boxing skills. Couture's throwing a lot more leg techniques. Uh, again, that can get, can work to your disadvantage. You can get tired. They're stopping the fight for a moment. Couture's uh, uh, shin pads coming un unwrapped here. Gonna do As seen that. by him throwing it very much, very often. And it appears it's taking them a while to get this shin guard repaired. But uh, hopefully it uh, will be ready to go for the rest of the fight. And here we are, starting time again. And that gave both fighters a nice little rest, but we'll see if it benefits anyone here. Mason was just starting to establish himself with the punches, and he's going back right back at it. Couture doesn't seem to have much defense from the punches. It seems like he's throwing his punches wildly. It seems like Mason may be throwing his crisper and straighter. But Couture has definitely been dominating the leg aspect of the fight. And another big left-right combination by Mason. Couture taking those punches very well, coming back with some of his own action. Barely seems to be phasing him, those big punches Mason's giving him. He's, uh, Couture looks a little bit more tired, a little bit more sweat on his body. Uh, definitely Couture is favoring the leg techniques and that's not helping him too much when they get in close. Couture's trying to stay on the outside, like you said, but Mason getting in on the inside with those nice punches. Uh, Brian earlier, Mason told me he didn't feel very well tonight, but uh, doesn't seem to be making much difference. Absolutely not, you wouldn't be able to tell it. He's doing a great job. Great first round here at Shindo Kumite for the Marshall Center at USF. James Mason going back to his corner. Couture, as you see there, he's uh, got a lot of body art. One of the more colorful fighters here at Shindo Kumite. One of the things that you'll notice in the Shindo Kumite, these fighters, every one of these fighters is, is a gentleman. They're all best friends before each of these fights. They're all best friends after one of these fights. Here's the replay. When the they're getting close, you don't see Couture really getting too much control. He's getting his knee up there, but he doesn't seem to be putting his whole body into it. It seems as though Mason is definitely dominating the upper body portion of the contest as far as the punches, but also on the inside, he's kind of controlling where they go, kind of being the ring general, if you will, controlling the action, which is always an advantage. Absolutely, he's doing a lot more damage up to the head, and I think that can make a difference in a fight like this. A Couture has been taking those blows very well, and we'll see here, there's another timeout. 
Oh, the buckets are still in the corner. The seconds have not completely retreated. There you go. Time in. This is the start of round number two. Couture coming out strong here with a nice kick and a nice right hand to the head that backs Mason up into the ropes. And now Couture trying to dominate on the inside. But once we, once again, like we said, Mason pushing the pile. Basically, when he's getting grabbed, he just pushes Couture wherever he wants him to go. And that's another slip. A good push by Mason. You'll notice that when uh, Couture tries to bring in those shin kicks, Mason brings his knee up, and that blocks those kicks to the thigh very effectively. Oh, Mason, nice jab, nice jab. Again, working the jab. And now he's starting to turn boxer on us. Three jabs in a row, all landed successfully. And those will take a lot out of a fighter. Just like the kicks, just like the shin kicks, an effective punch will stop you dead in your tracks. Absolutely, Mason is delivering some great jabs to the face of Couture, but Couture doesn't seem to be phased by those punches at all. Both fighters throwing kicks now, staying on the outside, kind of regaining the control of the fight, regaining a little strength and stamina here for the latter part of the fight, the second round of a four-rounder. Couture throwing some more leg techniques. Spinning back fist also can do a lot of damage. It's very hard to land those, but there you go. You see James Mason now responding by pouring it on. Comes back strong. Couture looks a little bit phased here, just a little bit heavy on his feet. And these punches, and there's another spinning back fist, but these punches for Mason, these straight right punches are landing and doing damage. Yeah, Couture is fighting flat-footed now. You'll see he's not moving around very well. His legs are kind of rubbery. Mason's kind of pushing him around. And here comes the end of round number two. And another right straight hand in for Mason. Mason doing a good job of covering up. And there's good the end fight. of round number two. Good fight, but like we've seen with these other amateur fights, these guys uh, don't have a whole lot of fights on their record, and they're getting a little bit tired now. We'll see if, if that comes into play in the second half of this fight as it did in the last half of, uh, of the last fight. Yeah, Brian, these fights are about the most tiring thing you could ever do in your life, and these guys train for hours and hours on a daily basis to get ready for one of these. Here's Here the you see Mason delivering some great punches to the body in the replay. Great nice jab. Left jab. And here we are for the start of round number three. James Mason out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the age of 40 with one win, zero losses, and one knockout on his record is controlling this fight against Troy Couture of Sarasota, Florida. But we'll see this. Still got two rounds left. And it's anybody's game here. Troy Couture likes those spinning techniques. And again, they can be very effective, I think, at this point in the fight. However, both these fighters are tired. Troy might be the more tired of the two and uh, might not be the best thing to do. And James Mason throwing a lot of punches to start the round, but none of them really seemed to connect. And Couture has definitely been coming back, moving forward, being the aggressor. Couture's punches don't seem to have a lot of power anymore. Both of these fighters a little bit weaker now. Nice kick by Couture. And another spinning back fist attempted, and you know, if you don't land the fist, you still land something, and that does a good bit of damage, especially when you're not expecting it. You can wind up a lot of speed on one of those spinning back techniques. A lot of momentum, a lot of momentum in those techniques. Absolutely. Mason has favored these straight punches, but to this point, it seems as though those have worked very well for him, and there he goes again. And you can see the sweat just billowing off the heads of these fighters when punches and kicks connect. Both fighters very tired again. Good knee by Mason. Mason, big right hand. Big right hand and snaps Couture's head back, but he moves forward. Amazing how much damage Couture can take without seeming to really be phased by it at all. This is the right business for him, apparently. Yes, he's, he's got a lot of determination. He's chosen the right profession. Now the other shin pad started to come off on Couture. Oh, and Mason now trying to take advantage of a uh, ill-attempted spinning back fist or kick by Couture. Nothing really came of it. 
one of the disadvantages of those spinning techniques, you don't want to turn your back to these guys very long. And as wind three winds up, seems as though both fighters have slowed down, but both are still coming forward and giving it their all, throwing everything they've got in their arsenal left. We've got one round remaining in this fight between Troy Couture and James Mason. And Brian, as with the previous fights, we see both fighters very winded, very tired. Here we are with the replay. Both fighters exchanging jabs. There's another kick by Couture. Very hard to lift your leg up after three rounds. It seems as though Mason uh, has let Couture perhaps get a little bit back into the fight in that round. It's hard to tell how the judges would have scored that one after he dominated the first two. So this last round could be crucial. Uh, Couture uh, not even sitting down in between rounds here. Mason breathing very heavily. Having trouble catching his breath here. Let's hope he can catch up a little bit for this, the final round. At the age of 40, just being in the ring and still standing after three rounds is... Very impressive. Yeah, very, very impressive, let alone being in position to win. And oh, again, the seconds are getting out of the corner of Couture and Mason. And here we go with round number four. Couture, again, establishing that kick early, just as he's done in all the other rounds, staying on the outside. And Mason going back to the jab and right hands. Couture throwing the knees in the clinch. Mason being very effective at blocking those knees, though. He's good left hand by Couture. And Mason punching on the inside of the body now, trying to get around that guard of Couture. Another spinning back fist attempted by Couture, and you know he's landed everything he's thrown with that, and that's a very difficult maneuver to pull off. As an amateur, it's very impressive. As you mentioned, Brian, even if you land the forearm on that, it still does damage. Mason at the age of 40, I don't think is going to be attempting any spinning back anything. Uh, I, I don't know. This guy's pretty good. He's very strong. Although at this point, both fighters are tired again. Couture's taking advantage. He's trying to hold on to Mason and put his weight on him during these clinches and tire him out even more. Mason absolutely seems to be a more conventional uh, in terms of throwing straight punches and what he's doing with his guard here in Couture is taking advantage of some of the spinning techniques and kicking from the outside. And it's an interesting fight. It's an interesting style matchup. And another big punch lands for Mason upstairs. And Couture seems to be in a little bit of trouble here as we wind up the fourth round. Couture now moving Mason up against the ropes and doing his own damage with his knees. This Mason is an excellent fight. Six great punches to Couture's face in that flurry. Didn't seem to phase him too much, though. Couture holding the ropes again. Bill Clay's pulling him off. Mason protecting himself and seeming to take a little rest up against the ropes. And it's about 10 seconds left in the round. And it appears as though we'll be going to another judge's decision here at Shindo Kumite 4 after a very competitive bout. And a punch lands a little late, but it's all good for these two fighters, these two warriors. Much respect between these fighters. How would you call this fight, Brian? Who do you think took this one? Uh, I, it's very tough to say, Bill. Uh, just like in the last fight, it seems as though James Mason dominated early on, and then Troy Couture came back late. So here's a replay of the fourth round. I think Couture did a good job of holding his own late in the fight. I think Mason might have taken it, though, for his his uh, punches when they were apart. I definitely believe that Mason was very effective with those punches, and without keeping score, I would say that he, I would favor him, but I would not be surprised if it was a draw or a close way uh, decision the other way. Yeah, you saw them in there. Saw them there in the uh, replay, both exchanging knees to the body. Again, very tiring for the person who's delivering the knee. Also Master, could do a lot of damage. Master Miradad up in the ring, uh, congratulating the fighters and the referee on a great event. Great fight here, Shindo Kumite 4. Tell us a little bit about what is the significance of the medals that the fighters receive. Well, um, the medals are basically to are given to the amateurs. Uh, the professional fighters get beautiful trophies, and uh, it's basically just the difference between them. Of course, you have a first place and a second place medal. You don't want to walk out here. Of course, each of these fighters is also getting a purse, make it worth their while. But of course, they also want to. He did a great job. James Bates coming over to talk to us. 
he felt bad, it didn't show. James Mason very concerned with uh, how he looks on TV, and he pulled it off, I'd say he did a good job. Uh, we let him know he's a handsome man. He'll look good. Bob Alexander getting the official tabulations. And here we go with the official particulars is Bob Alexander in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for both fighters, please. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, your decision by points. The score is 49-47 in favor of your winner from the blue corner, James Mason. And just as we anticipated, James Mason working early. That definitely got him a nice cushion, a nice lead to take a little bit of a break in the fourth round. And it was a close decision. It seems as though the judges probably gave the last round to Couture, which was deserved. But Mason definitely was impressive tonight. His boxing techniques, I think, are what really set him apart.